Alright, what's up everybody? This is Lee Reese, and I'm doing an updated guide to recording gameplay videos with MSI Afterburner. I did a video on this a while ago, but it's kind of outdated now with the latest version. So I'm going to do this step by step from scratch so you can see how to get this working. I also have this guide here that I wrote on the right, and I'm going to upload this so you guys can have access to it too, in case that's easier for you. So first off, you need to go to MSI Afterburner's website, which, just googling it here, first thing that comes up, and you want the latest stable version. You no longer need the beta version. They changed how beta and release versions work now. So I'm just going to go ahead and download that to my desktop. I'll uh, resume the video once that download's finished. But I guess in the meantime, you could completely uninstall old versions of MSI Afterburner, and then you need to restart after you uninstall the old versions. Otherwise, there's going to be issues. Alright, so once you've finished downloading MSI Afterburner, you're going to have a zip file wherever you saved it. I saved mine to my desktop. So go ahead and extract it. There should be fine. At the time of this video, we're on version 2.3.0, but in the future, you may be on a later version, so uh, shouldn't really matter, but just for reference. All right, it's done extracting. We have two files, MSI Combustor and MSI Afterburner. You don't need to worry about MSI Combustor at all, but uh, you want to go ahead and install MSI Afterburner. I'm not actually going to run through this since I already have it installed, as you can see in my taskbar. I've got the two icons, but once you finish once you completely finish installing MSI Afterburner, you're going to want to restart your computer. Alright, so after you've installed MSI Afterburner and restarted your computer, you're now going to want to open up MSI Afterburner, which is going to be different for me on Windows 8, but you need to open up both of these. Uh, normally, MSI Afterburner, the first one here, will open up both of them, but if it doesn't, then you'll just have to manually open up the second one, the on-screen display server. So make sure you have them both open. And once you do, you'll see the icons in your taskbar, one with the pink numbers and one without the pink numbers. You're going to start by going to the one without pink numbers. So this is the main MSI Afterburner window. The first thing to notice is this little I here, the information button. Uh, you're not going to worry about it for now, but it is something that's useful in troubleshooting, and I'll explain it more later on, so just keep that in mind. But for now, we're just going to hit the settings. And here is where I have to do a little note, as you can see here. Uh, some people have monitors that aren't supported by MSI Afterburner in terms of resolution because it has a minimum of like 1280 by 1024 and a lot of people are on laptop resolutions of like 1360 by 768 or something so this is too big so what you need to do I'll scroll down here there's a couple different ways to get around this is one to use control tab on your keyboard to change the different tabs that may work for some of you another is to temp temporarily reduce your desktop resolution which I'm not going to explain this in this video pretty basic stuff uh, the third one is to use alt plus space and then hit the M key and that will allow you to move the window around with your keyboard and then hit uh, then just left click to gain control of your mouse again and then another way that may work for some of you has to do with the DPI settings and I'll show you here it's kinda of different again on Windows 8 but normally you'll just right click on the icon and go to properties which you can do here and then you'll go to compatibility tab and check this box right here disable display scaling on high DPI settings that may work for you so hopefully one of those four methods works for you if this is too big for your screen uh, alright getting back to the rest of the guide so we're here in the general tab now. You want to check start with windows, start minimized. It's pretty much all you need to worry about here. Fan tab, don't worry about anything. This program is actually an overclocking tool, so keep that in mind. So that may come in handy for some of you, but you don't really have to worry about that if you just want to use this for recording. A monitoring tab, you don't need to do anything in here. On screen display tab, uncheck show on screen display on captured screenshots and videos. Uh, if you leave it checked, then on your actual video files it's going to have like the FPS counter showing it uh, and what are the information is on the on-screen display. Screen capture tab, don't need to worry about anything here. You can set this up if you want, but I don't want to. Uh, video capture tab, now this is where the good stuff is. Let's scroll down a little here on the guide. Uh, you set your shortcut key here, mine's F9 obviously. Um, you can set it to basically whatever you want. Video format. Uh, basically, use any of these except for uncompressed because uncompressed has absolutely huge file sizes, causes huge performance issues for most people. I recommend MJPG compression, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, just experiment with the different formats and look at the video files, record some test video files, and see what gives you the best 
uh, file size and colors and whatnot, whatever you prefer. Uh, for quality, you usually want to go between 90 and 100, but you can adjust that for performance issues. Uh, at 90%, you probably won't really notice a difference between 100% in terms of quality, but there will be a huge difference in file size. I'm at 100% mostly because I want to get the absolute highest quality for this guide so you can see all the text on my screen and whatnot. Uh, but normally I record at like 95 or 98 percent, something like that. For frame size, you always want to use a 16 to 9 frame. Reason for that is if you don't on YouTube, you'll get black bars around your videos. Uh, even if you don't play in 16 to 9 resolutions, uh, the MSI Afterburner will upscale or downscale the footage automatically. So there might be some stretching, but it's usually not too bad. But uh, I recommend 720p at least, 1080p if you can, but. 360p and 480p are fine too as long as you get 16 to 9 that fills up the whole YouTube video. Um, frame rate 30 plus. Uh, YouTube only renders at 30 FPS and people find 30 FPS as the minimum for smooth viewing. So you usually want to just leave it on 30. I record at 40 or sometimes 60 just because if you do a lot of slow mo editing, have a, having a higher recorded frame rate really helps with that, makes a smoother slow mo. You can leave this frame rate limit disabled. You don't really need to mess with it. It's mostly for like old games where you'll, where you'll get thousands of FPS and you want to limit it, but the game doesn't allow you to do so. You can do that from MSI Afterburner. Keeps your GPU from overheating. Videos folder, uh, whatever you want. I recommend a different hard drive just because you get better performance. As you can see here, I have two terabyte hard drives, and the second one is where all my videos are stored. You can see all my video files here. Don't need to worry about that for now. Uh, video capture properties. Leave this basically on defaults, automatic. Don't check that. You probably do want to check enable gamma correction because it helps uh, make the video. It's kind of weird to explain, but uh, your gameplay, the way that it's displayed on the screen, is going to be different from the way the video file is in terms of brightness. And gamma correction fixes that to some extent. You can also, in your editing program afterwards, adjust the brightness too if you need to do that. Uh, enable MJPG decoder. This is what you'll you, you'll enable if you have issues with your video files being read in uh, like Sony Vegas or some other editing program. Uh, check that and enable it. If that if this is checked and that still doesn't work, um, uncheck this and download the K-Lite codec pack. Um, if you have a 64-bit system, you'll need both the 64-bit and 32-bit uh, versions. But K-Lite codec pack here it is. And just download and install that. You'll want the 64-bit and then the regular 32-bit. But uh, hope this should work for you, the Enable NJBG decoder. All right, audio properties. If you just want to record game and system sound, like I usually do, then you'll have these settings here. Audio source number one is auto select. Audio source number two is none. However, if you want to record your own voice and do live commentary, then you'll need to change this to Wasapi playback device, leave that on auto select, uh, this to Wasapi capture device, and leave this on auto select. And then you'll need these settings here, down mix multi-channel audio to stereo, so with stereo rip here, uh, mix multiple audio tracks. That's if you want to do live uh, commentary with MSI Afterburner. I actually record mine separately through Audacity, as you can see here, recording that live. Uh, that allows me to manipulate my voice more, uh, clean up, uh, clean up like noise and buzzing and all that stuff. So that's why I do the regular way. All right, so that's about it for these settings. You'll want to then minimize this program. Uh, if you exit, then you won't be able to record because you actually need both programs running to record. Uh, once you have that, go to the what to the airplane with the pink numbers. Open that and. You want to make sure you start with window on and show on dis show on screen display as on and then show owned statistics here in the bottom right as also being on. And I think that just about covers everything. Uh, if nothing happens when you hit record key after doing all those settings, then what you may have is the uh, MSI Afterburner detecting a non-game as a 3D process and you'll see it show here. It'll say like explorer.exe or skydrive.exe, some program that's not a game but it's being detected as a 3D process. Uh, when that happens you'll want to go to the pink airplane and add the exception. 
Uh, so you could add whatever program it is. I had the issue with Razor Synapse, so I added that. But let me show you. Let's see. Mumble. I also had issues with Mumble. So you, once you add it, set the application detection level to zero or to none. All right. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know. As always, I'll try to help out. Uh, oh, if you don't edit your video files and you want to just upload raw gameplay, I highly recommend a program called Handbrake. Um, and then convert your videos to an H.264 MP4 file, and uh, that'll give you like pretty much no change in quality, but a big change in file size, which helps with uploading, especially for those of you like me who have slow uploads. Alright, Liberis out.